What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's talk about one of the most important theorems in probability theory, and that is the Bayes theorem or Bayes rule. To help you understand the concept, I will try my best to explain it as simply as possible. Also, instead of talking about all the theories that may be hard for you to understand and remember, I will use visualization to illustrate Bayes theorem intuitively. Afterward, we'll look at example together and see how to use the Bayes theorem to solve a real problem. Sounds exciting? All right, let's dive right into it. Bayes theorem is a Bayesian approach dealing with conditional probabilities, and it provides a mathematical rule for how you should change your existing beliefs when you're presented with new data or information. It states that the conditional probability of event A based on the occurrence of another event B is equal to the likelihood of event B given the event A multiplied by the probability of event A. To understand it intuitively, let's use visualizations to derive the Bayes theorem. I'm going to borrow the idea presented in this amazing blog post by Oscar Bonilla. This post does a great job of explaining the concept intuitively. I have the link to the post in the video description. Feel free to check it out. So the idea is to use a Venn diagram to visualize probabilities. Let's say we have a universe with all the possible outcomes and we are interested in some subset of them, namely some event. For example, we study the behaviors of users on website. Our universe is all the users on our website. Let's consider two possible outcomes for any particular user, whether they log in today or not. We use A in the Venn diagram to show the event, users who log in today. So what is the probability that a random selected user logs in today? It is just the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements of the universe, right? So it's simply A divided by U, the universe. Now let's look at another event, a user logged in yesterday. Let's call it event B. Similar to event A, we can get the probability that a randomly selected user logged in yesterday as a number of elements in B divided by the number of elements of the universe. Now let's look at these two events together. What if a user logged in both yesterday and today? We can use the overlapped area to represent the event that users who log in both yesterday and today. We can also get the probability of both events occurring, or the joint probability of A and B, which is the number of elements in the overlapped area over the total number of elements of the universe. This is getting interesting. Let's see how we can represent the conditional probability, probability of A given B from the diagram. Basically, B becomes our new universe now, and we want to know, given B, what is the probability of A? In other words, once we confine ourselves to just event B, what is the probability of A? From the diagram, we can tell it's simply the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by the probability of B. So we can represent the probability of A given B as the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. Similarly, we can get the conditional probability of B given A. In this case, A becomes our new universe, and we try to find the probability of event B within the new universe. It is equivalent to the probability of the intersection of A and B divided by probability of A. Now, let's organize what we have learned so far. We got two different conditional probabilities using a Venn diagram. The second equation tells us that P, A intersection B, is equivalent to P, B given A multiplied by P, A. It indicates another way to obtain the joint probability of events A and B. Therefore, we can replace the joint probability of events A and B with P, B given A multiplied by P, A in the formula for P, A given B. Doing so gives us Bayes' theorem. The Bayes' theorem allows us to calculate the probability of A given B once we know the probability of B given A, probability of A, and probability of B. Simple, right? I hope these diagrams help you understand how to derive the Bayes' theorem. Now, let's try applying Bayes' theorem to an example. Suppose we have the following situation. Each user on website has a daily login probability of one-fourth. In other words, the probability of any user login on any particular day is one-fourth. If a user login on a particular day and also login on a previous day, the probability of that user spending more than 5 minutes on a web page is 4 fifths. However, if a user login on a particular day 
and did not log in on a previous day, the probability of that user spending more than five minutes on web page is one third. The question is, given that a user spent more than five minutes on web page today, what is the probability that the user log in both today and yesterday? Well, because a user has to log in today to spend time on the web page, we know they have logged in today. So the question is basically, given that a user spent more than five minutes on web page today, what is the probability that the user logged in yesterday? This is clearly a conditional probability problem. Let's organize the information we have and write it using notation of conditional probabilities. Just to recap, we know the probability of daily login is one fourth. We also know that given a user login both yesterday and today, the probability that user spend more than five minutes on web page is four fifth. And we know that given user login today and did not login yesterday, the probability of that user spending more than five minutes on web page is one third. What we really want to obtain is the probability that a user login today and yesterday, given the user has spent more than five minutes on web page. Now that we have organized what we know about this problem, let's plug our information into Bayes' theorem. In this example, event A is a user login both yesterday and today, and event B is a user spending over five minutes on web page. The numerator is a conditional probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A. So we can calculate it as the probability of users spending more than five minutes on the web page, given that they log in both yesterday and today, multiplied by the probability that the user log in both yesterday and today. Well, the conditional probability is already known to us, which is four fifths. We only need to obtain the probability of the user log in both yesterday and today. Since the user's daily logins are independent, we can calculate the probability of a user logging both yesterday and today as one over four squared. So we can get the numerator easily. Next, let's see how to calculate the denominator, which is the probability of a user spending more than five minutes on web page. Here, we need to use the law of total probability, which states that the decomposition of probability A is the sum of the probabilities conditioned on BI multiplied by probability of bi, with event bi spanning all the cases of a. So the denominator, which is the probability of a user spending more than five minutes on web page, can be decomposed into two parts. The first part is the probability of a user spending more than five minutes on the web page and the user login both yesterday and today. The second part is the probability of a user spending more than five minutes on the web page but the user did not log in yesterday. You may realize that the first part is exactly the same as the numerator we just calculated, so we can reuse it. For the second part, we already know the conditional probability of a user login today but not yesterday is one third. We can obtain the probability of a user login today and not yesterday as one over four multiplied by three over four, because the probability of the user login on any day is one over four. Multiplying the two gives us the joint probability. Now, we got the probability of a user spending over five minutes on web page today. Since we have both the numerator and the denominator, we can get the final probability, which is four over nine. It means that given a user spent more than five minutes on the web page today, the probability that user logged in yesterday is less than one half. That's how we can apply Bayes' theorem to solve a real problem. Great job working through this problem with me, we made it. In this video, we covered one of the most commonly used theorems in probability theory, and that is the Bayes theorem, which is often used to calculate conditional probabilities. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get updates about future content. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you soon.